UE5 material editor can be quite intimidating, whether you're a beginner or coming from a different 3D software. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a basic master material in Unreal Engine 5. The best part about this is you'll be able to use this across all your projects and you'll only have to do the hard work once. This is materials made easy. If you're not sure what a master material is, it's just a base material that has a bunch of parameters assigned that you make and a bunch of spaghetti node stuff that I'll show you later. Once you've done all that, you can then instance out this material and apply it to as many objects as you want and create as many instances as you want. In each of these instances, you can then adjust all the parameters that you originally made. This circles back to what I said earlier, where you only need to do the hard work once. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense yet, you'll get it once we're done. Let's jump into Unreal. Okay, so right click, material, call it M underscore base mapped or whatever you want to call it. Also, quick side note, if you want to learn how I did the lighting for this type of scene, check out my art directing lights tutorial and that'll show you all the techniques you need to learn. Okay, so now that you have your new material, double click and open it up. I'm just going to drag it on top of here so that I have a full screen. The inputs that we're going to be concerned with are the base color, metallic, specular, roughness and normal. So for the base color, the things I want to be able to do is use a texture or a flat RGB color. I want to also be able to tint the texture if I choose to use one as well as control the saturation levels. And lastly, I want to create a toggle that switches between the texture and the flat RGB color. So first the diffuse texture, so right click, texture sample parameter 2D, I will call this diffuse and then I will grab a multiply. If you want to use a shortcut, you don't have to right click and type multiply. You can just hold M and click left mouse button. The purpose of this multiply is to be able to tint our texture if we want to. To do that, we'll need to create an RGB vector parameter. So you can just type vector, vector parameter. Another shortcut for this is if you hold V and click, that'll bring this uh, vector parameter up and then I'll just call this tint. So I will plug my diffuse into the A input and the tint into the B and I will set the default color of this tint to white so that it does not affect our diffuse at all until we actually change the RGB values. Next, I wanna add the saturation controls. So right click, type in desaturation. And then next, we want a parameter value that can control the level of saturation. So right click, type in scalar parameter. And a shortcut for this is if you hold down S and click, that'll bring up this. I will call it saturation, saturation. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the default at zero and now we'll just plug in the multiply into the top input and the saturation into the fraction input. The next component we'll make is the RGB color overlay. So if we don't wanna use a texture and we just wanna use a color instead, this is what'll let us do that. We're gonna create another vector parameter. So hold V and click, and then I'll call this RGB color. I'll just make the default value blue. And then we now want to create a switch that toggles between the two. So right click, static switch parameter. And I'm going to call this color, uh, color overlay question mark. And I'll plug RGB into true and then this desaturation into false. So if this value is false, we're gonna use the texture, but if we do want to use a color overlay, we want to use this RGB color, which is set to true. And I'm gonna leave the default at false, so it'll default to this texture. And then the last step is just to plug this into the base color. So that's it, that's the really simple base color setup. Now we can just do a bit of cleanup, drag this to the left so it's nice and organized and with all your nodes selected if you press C it'll group them and then you can name it uh, so I'll just call it base color 
So to be honest, that's kind of like the most complicated part. The rest of this is really easy. So let's move on to the metallic. Okay, so let's grab another texture sample parameter 2D. I'll call it metallic. Let's change the default texture to a black placeholder. If this is not showing up, all you need to do is import any material from Quixel Bridge and it'll load in all these default placeholder textures and then you can use it in your file. Once you have black placeholder selected, we just wanna create a minimum and maximum metallic amount, so a value between zero and one. To do that, very simple, we just need to create two parameters. So hold S and click, call this metallic underscore min. And then with this selected, hit control D. Wait, where did that, control D? Yeah, control D. Uh, and then rename it to metallic underscore max and set the default value to one. And I'm gonna have the slider max be one, just so we can't break anything. And then in this one, I'll leave that the same. And now we want to be able to change the values between zero and one, not only have zero and one. So to do that, just create a lerp node or an, a linear interpolate, which is one of, am I blind? There, this guy, this guy right here. The shortcut for this, if I delete it, if you hold L and click, it'll also pop up. So what this does is if I plug the minimum into A, maximum into B, and the texture into the alpha, this lerp or linear interpolate lets us control the values between zero and one of this texture that we have plugged in. So let's say you have your own custom metallic map plugged in. Let me just pick something random, something like this. You now have control over the lowest values and the highest values. So you can play with what's super metallic or what's very not metallic and have a lot of control over your material. And once that is done, you just got to get this lerp output, plug that into metallic and you're done. I'm just going to change this back to the black placeholder and then get this, press C, call it metallic and then drag it over here. Now we just got to repeat these steps for the specular and the roughness. So it's very simple. So remember hit S, specular min. Okay, so once you have your base color, metallic, specular, and roughness set up, we are ready to make the normal map parameters. It's a bit more complicated, but nothing too crazy, so just follow along. So let's grab another texture sample parameter 2D. We will call it normal. In the parameter default, just type in flat, and then you'll get this flat normal. So that way, your default material won't have any random bumps and it'll just be flat unless you change the map itself. Outside of the RGB, we are going to type component mask and we are gonna mask out the red and green channels. And then we will drag out again from the RGB and type component mask. And with this one, we're only gonna mask out the blue channel. So basically why we're doing this is so we can separate the blue from the red and green. And then we're going to multiply this with a parameter value that will help us control the intensity of the normal map. To do that, I'm just gonna drag this down, hit S, normal intensity, default will be one. And then I'm gonna hold M and click for a multiply, drag this into here, drag the red and green channels into here. And now what we need to do is bring back these channels into one vector again. So to do that, right click, type append vector, click that, drag the blue into B and the output of the multiply into A. So now we have successfully rebuilt the normal map while also adding the intensity component. And then last step, very simple, just drag this into the normal input. Now just go back to our nodes, select all our nodes, hit C, call it normal. And this is pretty much our base material complete. Okay, so one of the final but most important steps is we want to be able to control the tiling 
the offset and the rotation of our texture maps. There's a really good shortcut to do this, especially if you have imported a Quixel material and you have access to their material functions, which you should have by default. Just go into your material editor, right click, type in MF underscore tiling. Uh, the top one should be fine and then hit enter. So what this lets you do if I double click it, this gives you control over the tiling, the offset, and the rotation. You don't really need to worry about what they're doing in here. You just got to know that this works. So you can just close this out. You don't need to save any changes. And what you want to do is plug in the result into the UV input. One thing I like to do is separate the tiling of my normal map from the rest of my material. This is because sometimes I have a custom normal map that I want to have separate control over regardless of what my diffuse or roughness or metallic is. This is really easy to achieve. Just go S and click again for a scalar parameter, type normal tiling, and then I will leave the default to one, and then go M and left click to get a multiply. And then what you can do is hit, uh, sorry, hold control, which is the original result tiling that we plugged in out of the normal map parameter and drag it into the A and then just drag the tiling into the B, plug that into the UV input and you're done. Okay, so now that you have your base material set up, you just wanna hit save and that should automatically do the apply. And then we'll go back to our scene. I'll go to my tutorial. So this is what we just made. Now we can right click create material instance. I'll just call this MI for material instance um, timber. And then if I open it, you'll notice now we have access to all of our parameters that we made. So we can input our own texture maps, metallics, whatever. We have control over all the scalar parameters that we created. This is the toggle for our color overlay for the RGB uh, switch. And that's pretty much it. You also have some other options here, like two-sided, some other details that you don't really need to worry about. One thing you'll notice is it's not really super organized. Like you have the color overlay here, you have your tint material parameter here. Uh, we actually have control over how we group these parameters. So I'm just gonna go through that now and do a bit of housekeeping. Really, all I wanna do is just group up my color control parameters into one group and then I'm happy to leave the rest the same because it's already grouped together nicely. So what I'm going to do is if I have saturation selected, for example, you'll see on the left, it's under no group. So I'm just going to actually click in it and type zero one dash colors. If I hit apply, you'll notice now we have another group here called colors. So what that means is now I can select this, hold shift, I can get my, uh, sorry, not this, my color overlay and my RGB color, and then just change all of those to zero one colors. And once I hit apply, you'll notice I'll have all my color overlay controls up here. Once you have the nodes in the group that you like or the parameters in the group that you like, you can also change the order in which they appear. So you'll notice here, sort priority is, they're all by default on 32. But for example, say I want my color overlay switch to be on top, I can just change this to 31 or even just change it to one, whatever number, as long as it's higher than the others it will now come up on top like you see here. So I'll probably want my color overlay on top and then my tint and then my saturation. So I'm gonna put my saturation parameter to 33 and then hit apply. And now I've got 31, 32, 33 in the correct order. Okay, so now let's actually make this material a timber material. Uh, you'll notice with all of these, this is actually all being controlled with one texture. And I've just changed the tint and the UV offset to kind of randomize it a bit. So let's actually apply this material, for example, to this object here. And then I'll go back to my textures folder, turn all of these on, and let's just put these in the respective 
uh, inputs. So now that I have my textures in the right slots, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the material to my liking. So you'll notice the normal map is obviously a bit too intense. So I'm gonna just notch that down to like a 0.1. That looks a lot better. And I feel like it looks a little pale right now. So I'm actually going to tint it a bit and then just kind of darken it to something like that to sort of suit the mood. One quick thing I actually forgot to mention earlier, you'll notice if I turn up the saturation to one, it actually goes gray. And that is because in the base mat, this is a desaturation node, not a saturation node. So to actually control the saturation in the correct direction, all you need to do is drag out of the saturation scalar parameter, type in one minus, and then drag that into the fraction. So that'll invert the value, hit apply. Oh, set the default value to one first and then hit apply. It should work correctly. So if I go to zero, yep, yeah, zero is gray. And then one is uh, the original saturation level or the base saturation. And then if I go to like three, you'll notice it gets super blown out too. But you can like, pump this up, to, you know, a couple decimal points to really get a little pop of color if you need to. So once you're happy with this, you can then, you know, go back to your folder. If you hit control D, you know, create a few different instances and then, you know, apply it to, to these ones here maybe. And then you can adjust the color of these to red or whatever you want. You can enable the RGB overlay. So if I do that, you'll see our RGB color will now pop up and we can now have full real-time control over the color. And then if you don't like it, you just uncheck it. And now we are back to what we had before. So you can kind of see how you have a lot of possibilities with this by creating as many copies as you want. And as you see here, oh, sorry, here I have like a bunch of different woods that I made. I have different metal materials that I made that you can see here where I've played with the roughness maps and you know change the values to my liking and all I have is inputted in a roughness map and I used the color overlay and then applied that to a bunch of different instances and I did the same with a few different concretes which you saw in the original render in the intro. Remember this is just a really basic setup to help you get started. There's a lot more you can get out of the material editor in Unreal. It's super powerful. The next video I think you guys are really gonna like Stay tuned, like the video, peace.